Everyone knows how to wash a car, and even how to wash your dog. But have you ever wondered how to wash a steer? Using this video and the accompanying slides, you will learn all the steps you need to wash your pet cow. I'm going to walk you through all the steps and explain a little bit more than what you see on the slides. Um, and the general topics we're going to cover for washing your animal are brushing, washing, drying, combing, and clipping. Why? Because I wrote a technical manual and I emphasized a lot more on the fitting on show day. And there's a lot of background work you have to do before your animal is ready to be fit on show day. And grooming at home is the basis and groundwork you need to have a good show day. How are you going to do this? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you're going to use your animal that you've been working with. So that's kind of a given. Um, and you want to make sure your animal is halter broke and that they lead well. If they don't lead well, it's just going to be more work for you and it's going to be more stress on the animal prior to you even starting their grooming process. Um, you're also going to, it's highly recommended that you have a fitting shoe or some way to restrain your animal while you work with them. Um, this is going to keep you safe and the animal safe. And when you're working with your animal, safety is the number one priority. Once you have your animal all set up, you want to begin by brushing them. And the whole reason you brush them is you want to loosen the dirt and any dead hair that is on them. Um, this is just going to make washing easier and it's just your animal's going to be cleaner and it's going to be a better experience for them. Um, once you have all of the hair and dirt loosened or as much of it removed as you can, you're going to want to blow all of that dirt and hair out. Um, the reason you want to do this is it's going to make washing quicker and you're going to get a better wash. If you don't get that dirt and dead hair out, there is a chance that a seal can be created between the skin um, and the dirt created with the dirt in the water. And if this seal is created, your animal isn't going to get clean. And they aren't, or if this seal is there, it can cause a lot of skin irritation and skin problems later on. So once you have your animal all brushed and blown out, you want to begin by soaking them for their wash. Um, you want to make sure that you don't use, you want to be very cautious of the water temperature that you use. You don't want to stress your animal or shock your animal by using super cold water on a really hot day and vice versa. Um, just be very aware of the water that you are using. Once you do have them soaked down, you want to lather them you want to lather them up really good using a shampoo. Mane and Tail is the most highly recommended shampoo for cattle. Um, it is very sensitive on the skin and will, tends to not cause any irritation. Um, so when you're lathering them, you don't want to go past their neck. Um, you, so you want to go from their neck to their rear and then down to their feet. Be really careful with their feet. You don't want to get kicked. Um, but once you have them all lathered up, make sure you rinse it out really good. Um, you don't want to leave any shampoo, like I said, can cause irritations. Um, once you have them shampooed, you want to moisturize or condition them. There's a couple options for moisturizing and conditioning. There is a leave-in conditioner, which is typically a foam conditioner, and you'll spray that on um, after you have after you've brushed all the excess water out, which we'll talk about next. Um, but the other conditioner that we have is a is the rinse conditioner. That's your typical cream conditioner, just like you would use in the shower. Um, and there's a mane and tail offers, also offers a cream conditioner, so you don't want to get that all rubbed in and rinsed out um, prior to moving on to the next step. So for the next step, you're going to want to brush the animal again. So you're going to want to brush out any excess water. This is just going to help you when you go to blow dry them. It's not going to take nearly as long. Um, and then you're going to want to brush the hair in three directions. There's three steps to brushing their hair. You want to brush it down and forward, so from their tail to their front ankles, and then you're going to want to brush it all the way forward from tail to head, and then you're going to want to brush it from their back knees towards their shoulder. And doing these three steps in that order is going to help train the hair and make it easier for fitting on show day. Once you have their hair all brushed, <coughs> brushed out, you're going to want to blow dry the animal. It is very important that you get the animal completely dry. Um, if you don't, like I mentioned earlier, skin irritation is so, so, is so, so important. It's such a big deal. Um, you want to be, be, do everything you can to prevent it from happening. Um, so you're, when you blow dry the animal, you want to follow that last direction that you brush the animal. Um, so that from that back knee to that front shoulder. Um, so just make sure you follow that. Um, and you should be pretty set. Um, 
it is the hardest part of the animal to get dried is the belly. So be very aware of that and work really hard on making sure you get that really dry. I mean, if you don't get the animal all the way dry, they're just going to go roll in the dirt and all of your hard work has been lost. Um, be really cognizant of their feet and face. They are very sensitive there and there tends to be a lower setting on your blower. If there is, make sure you turn it down when you blow their face and feet. Um, and the more you work with your animal, the more you will learn them and what they will deal with from you. So after you've gotten them all blown out, you're going to want to use um, a scotch comb or a fluffer comb or some kind of comb and you're going to want to fluff them up. Um, this is going to show you where your animal needs to be clipped, where you need to work more on getting their hair trained, um, and this is just going to help you to get that desired look you want on show day. So after you get them all combed, you're going to want to clip them. So clipping is the hardest, most time consuming part of this entire process. Um, so the reason you clip an animal is to accentuate um, desired areas. You want an animal to look big and beefy. Um, steers are sold by the pound, and so the heavier they look, the more they're going to sell for. Um, so when you're clipping your animal, you want to make sure they have a rectangular and square or boxy body shape. So ignore the head, the legs, um, basically that that main torso area from the neck to the butt and down to the legs is the most important part. You want to look, basically want it to look like a box. Um, from that neck or jawline forward, which is basically straight down from the ear, um, you want to shave their face. It's just going to give a good contoured look and it's going to help um, accentuate the rest of their body. Um, the tail is also another area you shaved as shown in the top right picture of the accompanying slides. Um, there is a steer whose tail has been shaved just a little bit, and the reason you shave it is to accentuate that butt. You really want to make their butt look big. I mean, you sell your animal on pounds. And if the bigger their butt is, the heavier they look, the more you're going to make for your animal. <coughs> Excuse me. So... If in this entire process you have any questions or concerns, you don't know what product to buy, you don't know where to get it, um, you're confused, anything, please, please, please ask questions. Everyone around you is willing to help your extension agents, your leaders, experienced showers or members in your club or organization. If you don't know what to buy, ask at a feed or tax store. And even if all that doesn't work, go to a clinic. They are there to help you. There's some all around the state. They put them on all the time. Um, ask your extensionator or people at a feed and tax store where, when and where your local uh, clinics are going to be held. Um, I have now given you basically all the information you need to know about washing your pet steer. I do warn you that the directions that I've given you in this presentation are for animals that have had some level of training. I do not, I repeat, I do not recommend that you go try this on some random cow on the side of the road. It will not turn out well for you. And a huge aspect of any successful project is to work hard with your animal, is to work hard and spend a lot of time with your animal. And most importantly, have fun. And always remember that the more work you do at home, the easier it's going to be on show day.